Hey there, Sam. So we have been throwing custom exceptions in our repository to handle an error. There's actually a better way to do this. Laravel provides us a handy system to handle exceptions. Now, if you look at the app folder, you'll notice that there's a folder called exceptions. And inside it, there's a file called handler.php. The handler class is the core of how Laravel handle exceptions. And inside the class, you'll notice that there's a few properties that configures how the handler works. We'll come back to this in just a few minutes. Now, let's go back to our post controller and look at how we can use Laravel's exception handler. First thing first, let's investigate how will Laravel behave if we throw a normal PHP exception. So in the index method, I'll throw a random exception and we'll go to postman and send a get request to a post index endpoint. And now in the response, we get our exception. It is not that pretty, unfortunately. It would be great if we can get a proper JSON formatted string as the error response. To achieve that, we'll need to create a Laravel exception class. And Laravel makes it very easy for us to create one. We just need to head to our terminal and type in PHP Addison make exception, followed by the exception name. I'll call it general JSON exception. And now if we go to our exception folder, you'll notice that Laravel has created a new file for us. And it is our general JSON exception class. In a typical exception class, we have two methods, the report method and the render method. The report method is responsible for any reporting logic. So when an exception is thrown, we might want to send an email to the admin or notify our monitoring service provider. On the other hand, the render method is responsible for sending back the HTTP response. So whatever we return in a render method will become whatever we receive in the HTTP client. So in our case here, we want to return a JSON response which contains the error message. And since the exception class extends from the base PHP exception, we can call the native PHP get message method to get the error message. And for the second argument of the JSON response constructor, we need to supply the error code. And again, we can get it from the code property of the exception class. And also, if you need anything from the request, you can get it from the request argument. All right, let's test our code. We'll go back to our controller and now throw the general JSON exception rather than the normal exception, and also supply an error code of 422. And now let's go back to Postman, click on the send button again, and this time we see our error message in a beautifully formatted JSON response, and also with the error code that we define. Okay, now let's talk about the report method. As I mentioned before, the report method is responsible to report the exception. We can put in anything we want here, for example, logging the error in a file, or sending an email to the system admin. The report method will run before the render method. So if I dump a string in the report method, I will go back to Postman, click on the send button again, and we see our string ABC displayed before the JSON string. Okay, now, since our exception class is a child of the base exception class, we can override the properties and methods from the base exception class. For example, I can override a code property and set it to error code 422. So now, whenever we throw an instance of our general JSON exception, by default, it will send back a 422 error code. Okay, let's talk about the base handler. The first property that we see here is the don report property. We put in an array of exception classes here to tell Laravel to not run their report method. For example, currently our general JSON exception has a report method that simply dumps a string ABC. So if I put a general JSON exception class inside the DON report array, the report method will not run. Let's test it in Postman. Click on the send button again, and we're no longer seeing our ABC string in the response. The DON flush property contains an array of user input fields that we don't want to flush to the user. Flushing means to display a message to the user on a user interface. It could be a success message or a validation error message. Either way, flushing is not that relevant to us because we're building an API server and we don't have any user interface to display the error. Next, we have the register method. The register method is the place where we define the handling logic when an exception is thrown. This is an alternative to the exception class that we just created. Typically, we call two types of methods here, the reportable method and the renderable method. Both methods accepts a callback function as their argument. 
and the callback function will be the handler of the exception. And we will type in the exception type that we want to handle in the callback argument. I'll show you what I mean. I'll simply dump a string here and comment out our general JSON exception in the DON report array and type in our exception in the callback function and we'll go back to Postman, send another request. And we're not seeing the string dump in the response because we defined a report method in a general JSON exception class. The report method in our dedicated exception class will overwrite any reportable callbacks. So let's go to the general JSON exception class and comment out the report method. Let's try again in Postman. And now we see our string 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the same applies to renderable. We can type in an exception in the callback function and write the handling logic inside the callback body. I prefer to put my exception handling logic to their own dedicated exception class because I think it makes more sense and is easier to maintain. Creating well-defined exception classes can make sure that our API return consistent responses and the errors are handled and reported correctly. It is a huge part in an API server. So having a good design means that we can go for a long way. Now that we have defined our JSON exception, we can start refactoring our code to throw our custom exception. We'll go to our controller and remove the exception in our index method. And next we'll go to our post repository and amend our code to throw some error when a database operations has failed. So in the create method, we'll throw our custom JSON exception when we fail to create our post. Laravel also provides us a helper function to conditionally throw an exception. So we can replace our if statement here with the throw if function. The first argument is the condition to throw the exception. And the second argument is the exception class. And the third argument and onwards are the parameters to be passed onto the exceptions constructor. Isn't that neat? Next, we'll do the same for the other methods so that they are all using the general JSON exception class. And that is pretty much it. Now, before we end the lesson, I want to introduce you a few helper functions related to exceptions. Let's go back to post controller. Sometimes we just want to quickly send back an error response. We can quickly do that by calling the abort function and passing the error code. So if we go back to Postman and send a request, we see the 404 not found error page. We can also call the report helper function to manually trigger the report method in an exception class. So if I call the report function before the abort function, and pass in a new instance of our general JSON exception class. Go back to Postman, set another request, and we see the string dump in the report method just before the not found page. And that's it. These two helper functions could be very handy when we want to handle a simple one-off exception. Again, handling exception appropriately is extremely important when we want to build some serious app. We'll need to make sure that every error response has a consistent format with helpful error messages. As an exercise for this lesson, I want you to try and build your own exception classes and put them in the other repositories, like in a user repository and a comment repository. There's no right or wrong way to do it as long as you keep the format and message consistent. And make sure that you maintain a clear folder structure. Again, the source code for this lesson is in the description. Feel free to check it out if you're stuck. Key takeaway for this lesson, Creating custom exception classes in our app can ensure consistent API responses for error handling so that our API client can always expect the same format of error response. The report method in our exception class is responsible for reporting or logging the exception. The render method is responsible to send the error back to the HTTP client. The abort helper function is a quick way to send back an error response. It is very handy when we just want to send a one-off error message back to the client. The report helper function calls the report method in a specified exception class. Again, this is useful in situations where we just want to send a one-off exception report. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. 
Thanks for your support.